Welcome to Maths with Bob. Today we're looking at uh, non-right angled triangle trigonometry. Uh, there are two rules, basically the sine rule and the cosine rule. You might remember right angled triangle trigonometry was the Sokotoa idea. Uh, today we're just uh, going to go over the sine rule and the cosine rule with a few examples. Okay, so th the first thing is obviously the triangle is non-right angled to start with, obviously. And let's have a look. So first up, uh, a couple of ideas. A. I'm going to put A, B and C. Okay, and you can see here the that would be angle A up here, and opposite it uh, over here would be side A. Okay, so opposite angle A is side little a. So we have these big letters and little letters. Okay, let's have a look at. Uh, uh, okay, obviously C is over here, and opposite it would be a uh, little c. Okay, here's a little c. And again, obviously, opposite B would be a little b. So, okay, we have angles with marked as capital letters and sides uh, lowercase letters. Okay, so the, basically the sine rule is uh, A over sine of its angle is equal to B on the sine of its angle, and which is also equal to C over the sine of C. But we only normally set up proportion equations and we only have normally using two. So the first thing to realize is what is a sine rule situation? Well, we need, uh, if you have a quick look at this, we need a situation where we had like the A and its angle, uh, well, the angle A and the side opposite it, and maybe C. So we basically, a lot of people put, we need those like uh, corresponding, or the correspondence between an angle and a side and another angle and its side. Now. Some of those could be missing, like one of the sides might be missing or one of the angles might be missing. But we need the idea of, like, I'll just put it in here, it's like we need a crisscross idea. So we need a, an idea of this crisscross business um, matching up so we can set up the sign rule. But uh, either a side can be missing or an angle can be missing. So let's actually uh, look at this. Okay, so um, first up, okay, let's make side B. Uh, say 20, uh, say uh, 20, okay. the pen's battery is a bit flat. Okay, so obviously angle B, we can see here, obviously angle B is 20. Okay, now um, let's put uh, up here angle A, okay, uh, let's actually put in say an angle, say 40 degrees, and uh, Opposite it, let's actually put uh, okay, uh, little a as say 15. And make these say centimeters. Okay. Now, okay. So what have we got? Let's have a quick look. Well, we've got okay, an angle here. Obviously, this angle here. Okay, that angle, and opposite it is in its side. Okay. Now, if you look here, we don't actually know what that angle there is. That's actually an unknown angle. But we do have the side over here, 20. Okay. So we can actually set up the ratio now. So let's set the ratio up. Okay. So what would the ratio be? Okay. So it would be, what, 15 over the sine of the angle A, which is 40 degrees, is equal to, what, 20 over the sine of the angle B. Now let's actually just call it B, sine B. Okay. So how are we going to solve this? Well, I think uh, the easiest way is with all proportion equations is just cross multiply. So we do a situation, we go like this, we say 15 times sine b is equal to 20 times sine 40. So we just set that equation up. Uh, okay, so let's just set it up. Uh, 15, okay, uh, 60. Okay, 15 times the sine of b is equal to 20 times the sine of 40. Okay, uh, okay uh, the pen's just been writing a little bit over here. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we need to find the angle B, right? And so we need to isolate the, the B. So the first part would be uh, sine of B would be equal to 20 sine 40 over 15. I mean, I, I could simplify that. Obviously, 5 will go into 20 and 15. 
But I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to use, uh, try and work out what B is now. How do we get the B out of that expression? Well, you might remember that the B, let's go over here, B, we have to use this uh, shift sign expression. So let's actually just simplify that. So 20 divided by 5 would be, so it'd be like 4 sine of 40. Okay, we're running out of space over here, and 5 we're going to 15 three times. So we need to try and do this particular calculation in the calculator. Now shift sign, remember that's how we get the inverse sign to isolate the angle B. Now we can get a decimal angle or in, you know, we can press the degrees, minutes, seconds button and get degrees, minutes, seconds. So let's actually find B uh, correct to the nearest minute. So we're going to find B, okay, to nearest minute, okay. Okay, so we're going to have to round off our uh, angle to the nearest minute. So let's actually plug this into the calculator and see what happens. Okay, so when we plug it into the calculator, we will get 58.986 as a decimal angle. Well, let's just do, we need it to the nearest minute. So it's 59, sorry, 58 degrees, 59 minutes and 13 seconds. So it's, uh, so therefore, okay. So B, okay. Uh, let's actually do it in a different color. Okay, so B. B is equal to, what, 58 degrees and 50 nine minutes, okay, to the nearest minute, okay. Okay, so this is what the angle B would be. Okay, so it's actually 13.09 seconds, but we rounded it off to, obviously, we need to, just remembering that there are 60 uh, seconds in every minute, so obviously if it's 30 or uh, above, we round it up, but this case it was actually only 13, so we just round it down, okay. So just watching, you know, uh, obviously 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in a degree and all those sorts of things. Halfway is 30, so 30 and above is rounded up. Okay, now just while I'm on this, there is some ambiguity uh, in the sine rule and uh, that is basically because the sine of an angle in the first and second quadrant is in fact positive. So uh, I could get two answers for the shift sine uh, of that 4 sine 40 on 3. I've got the acute one here, and if I, the obtuse one obviously would be 180 minus this, okay. So uh, I always look at the triangle and just to see, is it an acute angle triangle or an obtuse angle triangle, and you have to sort of basically work backwards uh, and work around this ambiguity idea. Uh, in our case, it's just going to be the acute angle here, 58 degrees, 59 minutes, okay. So just be aware that there is an ambiguity existing in the sine rule in non-right angle triangle trigonometry and you just need to look uh, to the diagram and or if you like the geometry of the situation to work out which one it is. Okay well uh, let's have a look at another example now we're going to find the side you can see here x is opposite 42 and 12.2 is opposite 51 degrees. Okay let's make that. Okay so the first thing is uh, if you just have a look at the situation uh, why is it a sine rule situation? Okay well we have uh, this one and we have this double crossover idea, okay? And this time, uh, the one of the sides is missing. In the earlier example, one of the angles was missing. So we can set up our proportion equation now, okay? Um, so this is not a cosine rule situation. So the first thing is, how do we set it up? Well, uh, we would just basically just uh, now, you can see here I've got Bs and Cs. So we can actually orientate this any way we like. So if, um, some people, what they do is they say, well, oh, crikey, uh, don't like that C there, so let's make that A. Uh, okay, we now have B as well, so that's all right. So they can make that A and make that C. So we can orientate it any way around we like. I just like to, just to think of it in terms of the geometry of the situation. It's uh, the side over the opposite angle equals the side over its corresponding angle. Okay, so it'll be uh, X on the sine of now uh, 42. Now this is actually, so let's actually write it in terms of uh, where it is in fact in the equation. So, um, so actually x is the, the b uh, and the sine, now it doesn't really matter as I said, but some people like to set this up in terms of the, the correct letters uh, and 12.2 uh, over the sine of say 51. So the sine of 51 degrees. And we just uh, obviously cross multiply again to, to try and solve this, remember? 
x times the sine of 51 is equal to 12.2 times the sine of 42. And we'll just write that out. Okay, so uh, x times the sine of 51 is equal to 12.2 times the sine of uh, 42. Okay, sometimes we just uh, write it next to it. The, the, the implication is that it's multiplied. You see here, x sine 51 means x times sine 51. Uh, okay, so we then divide. So um, x is equal to, you can see here, 12.2 sine of uh, 42 degrees all over the sine of 51. Okay, so we're going to need to type that into the calculator and round it off to uh, two decimal places. So let's actually just uh, type that into the calculator. Is, uh, 10.504, so uh, to 10 decimal places. If they're centimeters, we just write our answer. Okay, so x is equal to uh, 10.504, so it's just 50 centimeters to two decimal places. Okay, 2 dp. Okay, all right, well, let's actually now have a look at the, uh, the cosine rule. Well, here we have uh, the non right angle triangle again. Uh, a angle A and side, little a, etc. So the cosine rule, okay, um, it comes in two forms to find the side and the angle. Um, so uh, the first one is uh, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Okay, so let's actually have a look at that. Okay, so Okay, so it says that this side, that one there, a squared is equal to this one squared, okay, plus this one squared, okay, um, minus 2bc, so I need to multiply those two together, okay, and I need to use that included angle, okay. So I need to be aware of the geometry, so we are a squared, the one opposite angle a um, actually is squared and I use the cosine of that angle uh, as well um, in the equation. So let's actually uh, do, uh, let's actually put some numbers in and just to see what happens. Okay, so let's actually just uh, put some numbers in. Okay, so uh, let's make, uh, let's say 50 degrees. Okay, that's a, uh, so let's call that x. Okay, and the b and the c, let's make, say, 10 and say 15 doesn't matter centimeters we just make these values up okay so what is uh, a squared now you'll find some people also like to uh, cross out the x and write a now I, I feel that's really unnecessary uh, you just need to as I said look at the geometry of the situation so no matter what corner you're in you always orientate yourself to an a in this case it's Fine, we can just see straight away that uh, x squared is equal to b squared plus c squared, so it'll be 15 squared plus 10 squared, or 10 squared plus 15 squared. Okay, oops, we're in, uh, <laughs> we're in the um, wrong pen, so let's try back the right pen. So let's have a look. Okay, uh, x squared is equal to what? Uh, 10 squared plus 15 squared. So, so let's actually just keep it as b squared, which is 15 squared plus. 10 squared minus 2 times b, which would be 15, times 10, times the cosine of, now the angle a, you can see here, is 50, okay, 50 degrees. Now, we have to remember this is x squared, uh, so uh, this is the square of the answer, so x is equal to the square root of this, so let's just type that into the calculator and see what happens. You can see here, i just written x squared is equal to 132.5. One six three seven one seven one. I'll actually just put dot 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 there. So uh, don't round it off. So round it off right at the end. So x would equal. Uh, okay. Uh, so we want to find it to two decimal places. Uh, let's just say the question said two dp. Uh, okay. So we have to find the square root of this answer. So just write square root answer on your calculator. So it's eleven point four nine six. So if uh, it's okay, it's eleven point okay four nine six. So I'd have to round it up to five zero uh, centimeters. Correct to two decimal places. This would be two dp. Okay, all right. So uh, that's uh, basically how we do it. Now it wouldn't matter what uh, where the x was. Uh, we can actually change the orientation, but it's always the one opposite the angle is squared. Okay. 
So, for instance, I just I quickly say I put in, uh, say, 60 degrees here, okay. Uh, you remember that would be, uh, okay, we'd have to still have to use the 50, okay, we wouldn't use the 60. Anyway, let's actually try and find an angle. Okay. Okay, well, the, this is a typical cosine rule situation where we have no angles whatsoever and we have all the sines, and then we may say, okay, find the largest angle. Okay, so like find largest angle. Okay, now, hopefully we realise that the... Uh, Largest angle, okay, would be in fact opposite the largest side. So here, here's the largest side. Let's have a look at the largest side here. Okay, here's the largest side. So uh, in here, this is the biggest angle in here. Okay, that would be the biggest angle. Now, you can actually use the cosine rule as it stands, but a lot of people uh, like to rearrange this cosine rule uh, to make uh, cosine A the subject. Um, okay, so cosine of A. Now, if you just rearrange this, if you move that whole expression over the other side, so you remember you'll get uh, b squared plus the c squared will still remain here. I'll move the a squared back across, and I have to divide by uh, what was in front of the cosine a, which is was positive now if I moved across the other side, so it's 2bc. So this is the angle version of the cosine rule, uh, and let's actually just plug some numbers in. So the cosine of a, now obviously, um, if I I could uh, reorganize this, so some people, as I said, like to do this, okay, okay, hold on, this is the biggest one over here, so let's cross it out and make that A. I mean, you can do uh, that and obviously reorganize the other ones, but I think it's just the geometry of the situation I always find is the best way to look at these particular uh, trigonometric problems. So, uh, the cosine of an angle A, okay, so let's think of B as A, <laughs> so oh, let's actually... That may sound a bit strange, but let's actually say, okay, so the cosine of, um, let's actually write it as cosine B, okay? The cosine of angle B. Now, okay, so it's always taking, we, we always take off uh, the one opposite it, so it's actually going to be, what, minus 15 squared, okay, over here. So um, the other sides are the 10 and the 12, okay, 10 squared plus the 12 squared. Okay, uh, the sides around the angle, uh, and the it's divided by two times b times c. Uh, okay, which if we're looking at a, so it's basically we're looking at really um, if it was cosine, it's, say if we're looking at the angle a, we, we're looking at the multiplication of these two uh, uh, parts. Okay, around here. Okay, so. What we are going to do now is, uh, oops, we've got a problem, slight problem with the, the board here at the moment. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, so let's actually go back. Okay, here we are. Okay, so let's actually uh, have a quick look. Okay, so uh, what would be the 2B in the C? Well, they would be, uh, okay, that would be this one here and this one here, okay, okay, all right, okay, so it would be, uh, let's say what would happen here, this would be 2 times the 10 times the 12, okay, so we need to work that out and go shift cosine of this particular result. Now, this may be a little bit confusing, okay, so let's actually, uh, have a quick look at the geometry of the situation for cosine A. Okay, so if I have cosine of A, now let's actually look at the geometry. The cosine of this angle up here, A, okay, the cosine of that is always equal to B squared and C squared. So it'll be the ones around it, so the, the B squared and the C squared. So it's basically the ones on either side of the angle, okay, and then I minus the one opposite it, which is the A squared over here, okay. And then it's all over 2 times b times c, so it's 2 times uh, the 15 times the 10. Okay, so now let's have a look at it in terms of the orientation now. We've just changed it to b. So, okay, so it's going to be the cosine of this one now, okay? So this is basically, okay, now remember, I always wrote down minus, so I straight away wrote down minus 15 squared on the end, okay? It's going to be uh, the b and the c, it doesn't matter which one I select as b and c, but basically this would be... Uh, the ones on either side of the angle, this one, this one, the 10 and the 12, will be squared, and added together, and we take off 15 squared. Then we divide it by, uh, you might remember, these two multiplied together, uh, and doubled, actually. 
as well. I might not have mentioned that, but it's 2 BC, or 2 times this case, uh, 2 CA. Okay. So uh, let's actually try and write down what would the cosine of B be in our... Uh, so let's actually just quickly have a look. What would cosine of B be? It would be, obviously, minus B squared. So we'd have to have an A squared and a C squared. So that would be an A squared and a C squared. And over here, obviously, we'd have... A, okay. Uh, this would be an A down here as well. Okay. But anyway, that, so it's just to do with the, uh, I think, the geometry of the situation. So let's actually just work this out and try and work out what our value is. Okay, so when we type this into our calculator uh, and we go shift cos answer, we end up getting 85.4593267. Okay, so that's the decimal angle. Now, uh, let's find this largest angle to the, say, the nearest minute. Okay, so we, we get to press the degrees, minute, second button and it turns out to be 85 degrees, 27 minutes in 33 seconds. So I need to round that up to 85 degrees, 28 minutes. So, so B, angle B, uh, is approximately, uh, you can see here, 85, 28. So 85 degrees, 28 minutes. Now, you notice the seconds were 33, so I had to round up the 27 to 28. Okay, so this is to the nearest minute. Okay, so I guess it's to do with the orientation of the sides A, B, and C, and obviously this is just one version um, of, I always remember, just one version of the cosine rule, that A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A, okay. Uh, you can orientate the letters through, uh, but, uh, and also cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC for the angle, which is one of the things we did here. So we are actually just finding this angle here, okay, which was the largest angle because it was opposite the largest side. Okay, well thank you for watching uh, and we'll...